Hi everyone! Welcome to Lisa's Paint Parties. This is Lisa and we are going to be starting our free live paint session very shortly. Um, so hope you guys are all ready for some fun tonight. Feel free once you start seeing me to say hi and let me know where you're tuning in from. Um, and uh, hopefully the music, you can hear it okay and it's not too overpowering. But I uh, definitely want to have a little bit of uh, a fun vibe going on tonight. Uh, the recording will also be available after this event as well. So you can uh, find it on my Facebook page under the videos tab, or you can find it on my YouTube channel, um, also called Lisa's Painting Parties. Hey, Lori! I'm so glad you're joining. Yay! So today, or tonight, I should say, we are painting our version of this really, really, really pretty rainbow winter painting. Um, I found this, I think it was probably on Instagram from what I can tell from my screenshot, as you can tell by those tabs there. So we're going to do our uh, recreation of this painting. So for those of you who haven't joined before, um, I basically find beautiful images, whether they're photos or paintings online. Sometimes you will send them in to me. And um, I post them up and everyone, you guys all vote on the one that you like best. Um, and then the one that we like best is the one that we recreate ourselves. So I'll be painting this for the first time with you all tonight. Um, and I'll talk you through how I approach painting this. Um, and essentially, um, if you have any tips or tricks, if you have anything you want to add, feel free to share them in the comments. I'm not a professional. I really love painting. I do a pretty decent job of it, I think. Um, and um, so far, people have enjoyed our videos and I really love doing them. So I love that you paint along with me. My favorite part is seeing all of your uh, paintings because everyone ends up doing like their own designs and, and sometimes they put their own tips or tricks or color schemes or and that makes it so much more fun. So this is really about being creative and um, knowing that you can paint from any inspiration that you find. I also use very, um, I guess, cheap or, or inexpensive would be the proper term, paints and brushes and whatnot. So again, very accessible to anyone who ever wanted to start painting. Um, it should really just be for fun. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than it needs to be. Um, so what I would suggest, as always, if you don't have it already, um, grab a screenshot. It may be hard in this scenario. Um, or you can grab um, the screenshot of this picture from the winning post that I posted yesterday, just so you have it as your own reference beside you. I will have this on the iPad here as we paint. So it's still a little helpful, but sometimes the colors are off just because of the lighting I have. So sometimes it's easier if you have um, your own there. And sometimes we find that um, either I might go too fast or too slow, and depending on how you paint, then you might want to use that as your own reference as well, right? So feel free to do that too. Oh my goodness, there's so many people today. This is so exciting. Everyone's on, I think, probably Christmas break, and everyone's chilling. These last couple of days, I feel, have been uh, just like a big blur. Like, I never know what time it is or what day it is. Um, so I'm really happy to be doing this with all of you. Oh my goodness. Well, I want to say hi to all of you. So I said hi to Lori, which is awesome. Hi, Margaret and Peggy and Monique and Diane and Carol. And Danielle, so we have a lot of like our American friends joining us. And Kayla, hey, you're back. I'm glad to see you again. Uh, Amber and Hannah, um, amazing. And Joe, hey, Joe. Anne is here. Hannah, yes, I remember seeing that you posted and you said this is your first time painting. I'm really excited that you're painting with us tonight. This is fantastic. I hope you enjoy it. And Nancy and Debbie, ah, so wonderful. This is great. So, to prepare for our painting, the supplies that I have are, I always use a canvas board. It's very thin, it's easy to store. I have now, this is my 46th painting party, so <laughs> I don't paint over my paintings. So I like thin so I can keep them all in one spot. It doesn't take up too much space. Um, but the quality is really good. I get them from Amazon. This is 11 by 14. I like the size a lot. Sometimes I do eight by 10, but again, you can use whatever works for you. Um, and then I always say that you should have your paint brushes in relation to your canvas size. So a big one to do a lot of coverage, a medium size, and a fine point to do some detail. And like I said, it just really just depends whatever size you have canvas, that would be your relation to your brushes, right? Um, I have my paints. So the paints that I always try to work from 
are, are the basic primary colors. So we have the red, sorry, the red, the blue, and the yellow, and then we have white and black. Um, so if you have those five colors, we can make any color from that. Um, it takes a little bit of time sometimes, a little bit of practice, but I'll walk you through any of those things. If you have other ones that are pre-mixed, totally cool, and you can use those too. And I'll walk you through again how to recreate the same image, and I do love the color and the rainbow in it, so I'm excited to recreate that. But if you want to do your own version, you can make it any color you want. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly what we do. Um, but yeah, so I have those, and these are just from like the dollar store. I have water containers. I usually have two um, available just because I'm a little bit of a control freak and I want to make sure I have enough stuff while I'm doing it. And then I have paper towels, essentially. So often um, I'll also talk you through like how I use my brushes. So when I'm using my brush, often I will um, not necessarily like fully wash them in the water. Sometimes I just wipe them off with a paper towel because um, sometimes when you add too much water, it ends up like diluting the paint and stuff. So anyways, I, I'll talk you through my process and if it helps you, great. Awesome. Oh my goodness, there's so many people today. It's fantastic. I think I said hi to Debbie, hi to Brenda. Awesome, Jan and Joanne. Perfect. And De Becky and Yannette. Hey, Yannette, how are you? I'm so glad. And Lucy, yay. I'm so glad. It's great to see the names that have been around for a while. This is really great. Okay, cool. And like I said, anyone who's just tuning in, if you can't paint with me right now, it's okay. This will be available on my YouTube channel under Lisa's Painting Parties after the event and also my Facebook page. I don't take them down so you can watch them whenever you so desire. All I ask for is I like seeing your paintings. So if you can snap a picture after you're done and send it, I, I love to see them. I like to share that too. So. Um, okay, cool. So it is 6.01. We're going to give a couple more minutes just to get everyone set up before I, I dive into the instruction. But um, essentially the way we're going to tackle this painting is just the way we do any other acrylic. Oh, and I use acrylic paints too. I, I don't know if I said that already or not, but I use acrylic paints. Um, yeah, because they're easy to use personally, <laughs> really, and I'm used to them. But we're going to start with uh, basically the background, and then we're going to work our way up. So we're actually going to jump right into the color when we start, which is going to be super fun. Um, and we're going to paint this beautiful rainbow sky, um, and then we're, we'll go from there. So I'll talk you through each of the process. It might look a little complex, but it's not. The great thing about acrylic paint for anyone who's joining us or anyone who's not comfortable with acrylic paint is that it's water-based. So it can, dry, it can dry pretty quickly if you're using thin coats. Um, and once it dries, you can paint right over it. So if you make any mistake or anything you don't like about it, you can just wait till it dries and then you can like pop a new color right on top of it and fix anything up, which is why I really love it. Um, so it's very forgiving in that way. At the same time, it can be a little temperamental. So just because it's water-based, um, it doesn't mean it's going to come out of any clothing if it dries. So if you're using clothing you don't want to get dirty, I strongly suggest put something on that you don't care if it gets dirty because it will stain your clothes. Once it dries fully, it's not coming out. Um, so be cautious of that. Fantastic. Hi, Tori. I'm so glad you're joining, Tori. Hi, Heather. Yay, and Tanya and Cheryl. Yay, fantastic. Oh, a fellow Durham region person, Cheryl. I'm in Ajax, so we're neighbors. Yay. Anyone who doesn't know where Ajax is, which I don't blame you, it's outside of Toronto, um, like 30 minutes. I was born and raised in Toronto, so I still feel like I'm a Torontonian, but I've been out here now for like eight years, so I think I have to accept the fact that I'm now from the burbs, but it's okay. <laughs> it's a little bit of a sore spot. All right. Okay, cool. So, perfect. Oh, Danielle says, working from background and working forward is how I design for advertisements. Good to know. Yeah, absolutely, Danielle. It's a, that's the best way to approach it, especially with, I find, again, with acrylic, I, I feel like it's so easy to paint on top of things. Sometimes you, if you paint on top of an existing color that's there, sometimes you need to maybe prep it with white before you repaint because the color can be seen through, especially with the paints. Like I use, again, very cheap paints. So um, they're not like the best at uh, being very opaque at times. And sometimes it can dip it off. <laughs> but that's part of the fun, I guess. I'm a little bit weird that way. Um, hey, Janice. Hey, Paula. Hey. Okay, cool. So I think we shall start. Oh, I have my water too. So I'm going to be drinking some water as we go because I will get parched. So make sure you have a drink too. Okay. Awesome. So, okay. 
let's start talking it through a little bit more before we jump right in. So what we're going to do is let's look at the composition of the painting. So we have the sky that goes below. So the midway point of the painting is about there. So the sky goes just below the midpoint. And again, I'm going to show you how to do this, but you can change it up, right? So you can make the sky shorter or longer, whatever you so desire. But I'm, again, I'm going to make it about there. So what I'm, what I'm going to put the sky to is just probably just a little bit lower than halfway. So I'm going to bring the sky down to about there. At the same time, we're going to bring it afterwards. We're going to end up plotting in a lot of this water. And we're going to do that almost right after we do the sky. We're going to do lots of color right off the hop. Um, so get ready. Um, and where we're going to start with the sky is... What I want to do is I'm going to put a very thin coat of water just to wet the canvas and to make it easy to spread everything. OK, so that's what we're going to do to start is just put water on the canvas, but very, very light. And if you end up putting a little bit too much, you can always get your paper towel and like dab it off a bit. Because um, again, we just want it to spread the paint easy when we start that process. OK, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera closer to the picture and to the, uh, to the canvas. Um, so you won't see my beautiful face anymore, but I think you really just want to see the painting anyways. So I'll do that. Um, let's just set that up nicely. Nope, we need to go that way. Everything's back right and I forget sometimes. Okay, I think that works. Nope. Okay. So there we go. That's how we're doing. All right, so let's start, like I said, just get a little bit of water on your biggest brush that's going to give it the most coverage. And we're just going to put water along your canvas until about just below halfway. If you go a little further, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to get some water on here. And the reason we do this is acrylic paint is water-based. So this will allow us to spread and to blend very easily. Sometimes when we do this process, sometimes you may also want to do a second coat. Like once we do the painting, you may want to do another, and that's totally fine. Sometimes it gets a little bit too thin, but we'll see how it goes and decide as it's a process. We'll see. So mine's nice, has a nice thin coat of water, but I'm still going to dab it a little bit. Just to take some of the water off. So I don't want it to be dripping. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So I want to start with... I want to start with the red. Let's go right... Let's go right for the baseline with the red. So let's get some red. So on your palette... My palette's always nice and dirty. I know you guys... I'm sure some of you are like, ugh, look at her horrible palette. But I kind of love it. Uh, I'm going to put red. I'm going to put some yellow. Oh, maybe. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to get red and yellow right now on here. I'm going to just start with those. I'm not putting a ton on my palette because it does dry pretty quickly. So I like to kind of do it as we go. Hey, Valerie. Using multimedia paper, do we need to wet it first? I'm not so sure... Um, I wouldn't put too much water at all on there because it might get a little too much. I think you might be able to get away with not. You just might need a bit more paint. Or you might want to add a little bit of water to your paint just to thin it out a bit. It depends on how it goes on, to be honest. Um, okay, so now I'm going to start with putting in my horizon line, essentially, which is basically the line that's going that's right behind these trees, right? So I'm going to end up painting over this with the trees, but I want to just put in where my land and my sky are meeting. So let's just throw in a nice red line right there. Okay. And you'll notice when you put the paint on and it's wet behind it, it spreads very easily and it covers it pretty nicely. Okay. Then I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Again, depending on your canvas size, you kind of have to decide how much red you want. I want it to be similar to this, so I want it to be to where the, my trees are. But I'm going to bring it a little bit higher because my red's going to mix into my yellow to make my orange, right? So the way I'm going to do that, now with my brush, it's still all dirty from the red. 
I'm going to dip it into my yellow. I'm going to go into the area that's white, like that's still not painted with the red. I'm going to like just pop it in like that. So it's already starting to mix because my paintbrush has like a ton of red on it. And then I'm going to bring it into my red. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more yellow and I'm going to put it right on top of my red this time. But I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to go to the mid point just to start this blending process. As you can see, I already have this really nice orange happening. But don't go, don't bring it too far into the red right now because it will just all turn orange. So, so I have this orange strip, I have this red, I'm going to get my paper towel and just like get some of the excess paint off because it's already gotten like really painty now. It's just kind of like dirty but not full of paint. And I'm going to dip back into my red and I'm just going to go over that red area again. And then I'm going to bring into the orange with the red to mix it a little bit more while it's still wet. There we go. So now it has a nice blend happening. Okay. And again, I'm going to just take my paper towel. I'm just going to clean off my brush. Partially clean it. But now before I do a full on yellow, I'm going to actually clean my brush with water to take all the red paint out. Still going to have a little bit of residue because it always does. And now I'm going to grab yellow, pure yellow, and we're going to put the yellow on the actual canvas, not where the orange is, okay, because you want it to be pretty pure. Okay, and then now as I get into where that orange lives, I'm going to get more yellow and I'm going to bring it in. We're not going to bring that orange anywhere higher because if we do, it's going to take over that yellow pretty easily. So every time I want to get more into that orange, I need to grab more yellow paint on my brush. Because that orange is going to eat it up. See? Like right here, like I have a little bit too much there. I think you can see. It's hard to see. This is very dark. Blech. I'm also trying to get the size of my canvas as I go. I'm not doing a very good job on that side, but I do try to get it mixed as we go. So now we should have a really nice yellow, orange, red gradient happening. And if you notice, I'm like cleaning my brush off and then I'm using my dry, dirty brush, but it's dry, to then touch up and to blend it a little bit more as I do it. And then I clean it off again. Okay. All right. So now we're going to keep building up. Okay. And we want to get into this like nice, like it's almost like a green, green color. And then kind of like a light blue into a dark blue. So let's get our blue on our palette. I'm also going to get white on my palette. Ah, some dry paint that attacked me. That's what happens. <laughs> So I just have blue and white. I just have dollops on there. It's not really any particular amounts. I always add as I go. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to get more yellow just on the actual canvas. We're going to make our green. Ooh, there's like some fabric. So probably cat hair, realistically. I'm going to get that going here. And I'm going to add like a little like a touch of blue. We're going to pop it in right into that yellow. And I'm going to get a dollop of white and we're going to go right on top of that. Get kind of like a greeny kind of color. If you have a pre-mixed green, you could also use that instead of getting these little dollops of random colors to make a, a green kind of vibe happening. I definitely brought up my bright sky a little bit higher than the original. But eh, we'll go with it. Okay, 
So now I'm going to get some more white. I'm trying to mimic this because it's a little bit like has a green war on this side a bit and then the blue kind of comes more on this side. So I'm trying to mimic that a bit. So I'm just getting white paint now. I'm going to get a little bit, a little bit of blue. We're going to bring it in to this white paint. Still some greeny tinge to it. So that's good. Then if you have like a pre-mixed turquoise that you'd rather use, go for it. Otherwise, like I said, you can kind of follow what I'm saying here with these. So I'm just going back and forth with yellow, sorry, no, with white and with blue. I said yellow because I'm getting close to my yellow. <laughs> And you want to try to do this when the paint is still wet. If it starts to dry, it's not going to blend as nicely. But again, it's not a big deal because you can always just go around right top of it with the colors again. This blue is definitely not as bright as in the picture. Mine's going to be a creepier, darker sky, I guess. I'm going to put in some brighter blue here. I'm just getting some of my darker blue happening as I pull it up into the sky. So I'm just getting my pure blue on my brush. And then I bring it into the canvas. And I just pull it down into my lighter blue. And I'm always going with like similar kind of long strokes to really just kind of blend it and to make it feel like a almost like, kind of almost like a cloudy sky in a way. Like it's kind of like a blurred third vibe try to keep in contact with your comments sorry about that I'm scared of the trees in this one I'm still trying to fix this Christmas tree in this starry night evening oh Joe yeah we'll walk you through the trees it, it's definitely I, I understand because I, I get scared of trees sometimes too with the trees like less is more and that's where I find them a little scary because you want to do more than what's needed I find not you but like in general like that's why I feel like you actually have to kind of just do a little bit and then like leave it and that's where it's really scary because <laughs> you're like ah I feel like the more I touch it or you know it I feel like it seems like you it's more complicated than what it is I think that's what I'm trying to say okay so you want to get that purple going and so I'm going to keep going and so I'm not doing these clouds right we're just doing the background those clouds are on top of everything right so don't worry about that right yet I'm just going to get some of this purple I'm going to grab a dollop of my red and I'm going to throw it into my sky because red and blue make purple and depending on the I guess type of purple you want you want it to have you may want to add more red or more blue. It depends on the vibe you want to go with. I kind of, I do like the red or the purple with more of a red tinge to it. But I am just going to play with it and mix it as I go on my canvas. Okay. So this is kind of weird there to me. So I'm going to again in quotes clean off my brush because I'm not really fully cleaning it I'm just going to go and put a little bit more blue in here okay. Okay. and then I'm going to in quotes, clean my brush. Put some white back in here. And just pull that white back in here. So this is basically like wet on wet, wet technique. That's essentially what I do a lot of when I'm doing my backgrounds. Um, that's what I prefer to do with acrylics. I find that they're it, again, if you're the first time you're using it, you might be hating it. <laughs> That's totally normal. 
you have to kind of like start feeling it out um, and playing like with the brushes. You have to be cautious or conscious and cautious, I suppose, of how much paint is living on your brush um, and cleaning it off and rinsing it off and whatnot. And again, not just using water because if you use water and if I put a bunch of water on here, everything's going to mix and blur and it's not going to look good. So we don't want to just throw water at the problem. I don't know if the problem is the right word. <laughs> But we don't want to be doing that, which is why I love paper towel and just get it really nice and soak it up. Oh, sorry, Carol. You said uh, you're cleaning up a paint spill. What do you use to start the uh, bluish colors in the sky? Okay, so with the bluish colors, so we went from the red, put the yellow to make, make the orange, and then I put more yellow to get this greenish color and put a little bit of blue in it to get that going, but then put more, some white just to dull it down. So I did... A lot of yellow, a touch of blue, and some white. And then I cleaned off my brush-ish, and then I used white, and I put a little bit of blue to get a lighter blue. And then I continued to go up and made it darker as I went up. Hopefully that helped. Again, if you want to get this, like, that, that turquoise color is really pretty, and I don't have that. But I do want to make this a little lighter, so I'm going to throw in some white. And I'm trying to do this while it's still wet because it blends nicely. Worst case, if we have to paint another layer on top, we can do that. It's not a big deal. Yellow going. I'm just trying to touch it up, but it's starting to dry a bit, so I'm using like little touches of paint, of yellow and white, just to lighten it up a little bit in this area, because I feel like it's a little dark. Oh, don't go away, picture, we need you. So weird over here. See, it dried until like I don't know if you can see, but like a lot of the brush strokes become start becoming more visible when it dries, and it's not as like smooth in terms of the blending, and that that bothers me. <laughs> so I keep going over it just to smooth out some of the brush strokes and the blend. It kind of gives it a nice kind of cloudy look to it. Okay, so if you guys can see, it's so dark. So there's my blend in it, on my version here. Oh, Rhonda says it sounds I'm muffled. You know what? When I was hearing back one of my videos, I did feel that way too. Let's pause. Let's like stop the music, even though I would like to have music, but I'd rather you be able to hear me and not being crackled. Let me know, Orenda, if that took it away or if I still sound crackly like I'm wondering if it's just my sound in general and Sue uh, yes the video does get saved so if you missed the start I think you can even rewind live videos back or something so you could technically like watch it now if you wanted to go back um, otherwise you can uh, watch under the videos tab on the Facebook page or on my YouTube channel under Lisa's painting parties Ah, good point. So Amber is saying, too, that there's a place in each brush that holds a small amount of paint between the brush and the handle. That's important, too, when you're cleaning your brushes as well, um, which is why you have to make sure they're really clean really well, especially when you're using acrylic. Any paints, probably. But you don't want it to dry in there. But that's, that part, it actually helps quite a bit in a lot of instances because sometimes you have extra paint that you can kind of get on nicely. And, um, and other times it can be a bit of a hindrance. So it's a good thing to call out. Thank you, Amber. 
Oh, you not said the music was not an issue for her. Okay, cool. Well, that's good. I'm glad that it wasn't an issue for you. I felt like one of my last recordings when I had some music in the background, it just made everything really crackly, like my voice sounded crackly, and I don't know if that's just happening, period. Okay, cool. So now what I'm looking at is, I'm just looking to see. So my, so like I said before, my paint is from the dollar store, and I find when I use my red um, and with my blue, it tends to like be very thin. So I find like this corner, you can see the canvas a lot, and I don't like the way that looks. And I don't really like how I can see my canvas here. And now that it's dry, I do still want to touch up those kind of spots. So just take a look at your canvas and see if there's anything that you don't like about how it's looking uh, before we move on to the next point, because you may want to do another layer of what we basically just exactly did, but then you want to do another layer on top of it just to get it a bit more opaque. Um, and I'm just contemplating whether I want to do that now or whether I want to move on. I'm not sure yet, because this is kind of bugging me. I know granted we're still going to put some clouds and we can kind of touch it up at that point, so maybe that will be okay. Meh. Yeah, maybe we'll leave it for momentarily, and then we'll go down and put in some of this really pretty colorful water. So essentially when we do, the next thing we do, really, is do the water, which might seem kind of strange, but it is the next kind of furthest thing in the background that we want to create, because everything's going to live on top of this water. So this water lives here, but then we're going to put, obviously, this land on top, we're going to put the shadows on top, we're going to do all that on top of it. So we need to still build that in first, and then we end up cutting in how we want the land to shape it. So what I want you to think of right now is, where is that water going to live for you in this painting? Do you want it to be similar to this? Do you want it to be totally different? It's really up to you, but you just need to think about that wherever you want the water to live, you need to make sure you paint past those, ooh, hi, <laughs> past or into wherever the land's going to cover it, essentially, okay? So just think about that. So if the, wa the water is going to live kind of here, you want to make sure your paint goes out to about there. Like if it's going to be like thinner, you still want to make sure it kind of goes out and then the land will go on top of it to make a nice smooth lines on top of it, okay? Okay, cool. So we're going to essentially play with this and do the same thing we did with the sky, only with the water in reverse. Cool? So first step, like I said, we're going to just wet it down a little bit with water to make it a little bit easier. It's not as much of an issue here, maybe at the bottom, because there's a lot more water that lives at the bottom here. And I definitely wet this a bit too much, so I'm just going to dabby dabby. Awesome. Okay, cool. Cool, so I'm going to get the red, and we're going to start it up here. Now, it's a little purplish, if you notice, which... Maybe we'll add it in a little bit. Okay, let's just get some red though on here. So it's going to start here. I might even touch it. Let's touch it. Why not? We're going to have land covering it anyways. No big deal. Okay. Let's clean it off with my paper towel and get some yellow. You know what? I put too much water on mine. So mine, if you see, it's very... It's like too wet. I'm just gonna, if you do this like I did, you can get your paper towel and just dab on top just to get rid of the wetness. I'm gonna redo it once I take away some of that wetness. Yeah, that was too much. It was just, when it starts to bleed all over, that's not what we want. We want it to go on smooth and help us, not hinder us, you know? Okay, there we go. That's, that's, that's better. That's a little, little damp, but not not all over the place, you know. Get some yellow. We're going to bring that into our red. I'm going to bring in a little more to get that orangey feel. Okay, so we're not going to go back down until we clean off our brush a bit and put some more yellow in. Otherwise, everything's going to be a big orangey red lake. And unless you're going for that, you don't want to do that. I'm ready almost out of yellow. Lots of yellow. Okay. Hey, 
Patty. Yes, Michelle, I will be. It's on YouTube, and it's over on my YouTube channel, Lisa's Painting Parties, and also under the videos tab on um, my Facebook page. And I'm not taking it down, so still be there for free for anyone who's interested. Or if you want to share it with someone, if you know someone who might like it, feel free to let them know about it. Okay, so again, I'm now I'm going to start putting in some blue into the yellow to get kind of a green happening. dirty water right now. Ugh. Get a little bit of white to lighten it up slightly. Bring that up a little bit. Okay, cool. brushes are too long for my area so the tip of my brush which is really long keeps <laughs> hitting where my computer is makes it a little bit tricky for me okay so let's get some of this light blue going some more blue Put a little bit more yellow in there just to kind of try to make it a little bit the green tinge to it. Okay, so let's just bring the blue down and then I'm gonna make it get some purplish going in here too. And it can look messy. Like, don't worry about any of this because we're going to end up covering it all up. So if it looks weird and messy like that, it's totally fine. Because we're going to um, put land right on top of it anyway. So just get these colors in. Get the sides of your painting. I'm totally forgetting to do that today. My canvas board is not so much of an issue because it's usually would be in a frame that would hide the sides, but I still want it to feel like it continues off the sides. So definitely do yours. Putting in a little bit more of that darker blue. getting some white so I can blend it in a little bit further up to get it a little bit lighter. Okay. And this is the water area too so you can feel free to have more like shorter lines if you want to kind of give more of this water vibe. We can always add it in later too. Sorry guys, I missed some other comments. So Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, perfect. So no problem, Stephanie. It's my pleasure. I'm so glad you guys like them. Joe says that the yellow disappeared. <laughs> yeah. So the yellow two things. So when you put the yellow on, initially, like I think at this point, maybe this won't work for you because you probably already painted it <laughs> on top. But that's why I say to put it on right on the white 
and we don't go on top of it. Once we put on the main yellow, you kind of leave it because the yellow will just like blend into whatever else is there. So like this, for example, like it went a little bit, it almost, I have no, no yellow essentially there. And I'm going to go back in and put it back on, like put a little bit more yellow um, because yellow will completely disappear. So ideally, when you initially do it, you put it on the white of your canvas, put a nice amount, and then wherever you want that yellow to pop, you don't really put anything else on top of it and don't mix it in anymore. Keep that, like, sturdy. And then put other yellow on the sides to blend it and just keep that as original as possible. So, like, over here, for example, I didn't really put anything on top of there, so it still stands out nicely. But anywhere else I touched it, the yellow kind of goes away super fast. So once it, like now, for example, now that it's dry, I can go back in and I can add a little bit more. And the yellow is great, too, because if you go on top and you do it dry, it still looks really nice and clear, and it pops nicely. So I would definitely do that, too. Um, and then... So, yeah, so I would wait till it kind of dries, Joe, and then just, like, put more yellow on top to make it pop. Um, or the other way, too, is you kind of do more of, like, a... If you put it on top, you want to get it on, and then you want to kind of like leave it and try not to touch it so much where when it's wet. Like now I'm just kind of blending the sides of it, but I'm trying not to touch the middle where I want it to stay yellow. So like here I want it to stay more yellow, so I'm just hitting the sides to get it nice and blended. I'm trying to keep that as yellow as possible to try to keep the yellow to be pure. And Amber is, ha Am oh, sorry, Patty says to catch up later. Awesome. Sounds good, Patty. Um, and mix color on the palette first. Absolutely. So Amber says if you mix the color on the palette first, you can. I tend, I always do it on my canvas. I don't usually mix it first. That's just my style of it. But absolutely, you can definitely get more control if you do it on your palette for sure. That's a great tip. Oh, thank you, Veer. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> and I said she couldn't use long brushes. Yeah. I've had them forever, and I'm used to them. And th I never even thought about it as being a pain until doing it here <laughs> and then hitting other things in front of me. But before that, it didn't even cross my mind. I'm just going to go over this a little bit before it fully dries because it already is pretty dry and I want to just get a little bit more I want a little bit of variation on this purple I want it to be a little bit redder purple in some areas a little bit more bluey purple in other areas just to look a little bit nicer different put some of the actual blue there I did want it to be a little bit more purpley in here. It's already dried. I don't know if I want to add that in now or not. Let's see. What's going to be fun is when we actually do the land and we carve it in. It's going to look so cool. Okay, I love that part. Okay. Yeah, some of this I don't like. I want to still touch up some of these areas. It's bugging me. Okay, I need to get more blue in my palette because I've already used up a lot of my blue. A little bit more. Oh, I think I need more red too. All right. Let's see. That's a really good point too. So Joe says um, that she's had to mix in white to get the yellow to stay, and that's a really, really good way to do it too. The white will help as well. So even like even once it's dried, if you want to do that too, you could. If you find that it's not popping enough, you could always put a little bit of white, or put white and yellow, and then it will stay. That's a really good point. Thanks, everyone. I'm glad. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying it and liking it. If you notice, too, in this one, some of the strokes, are, I, I went more fully horizontal as I was mixing, but some of the strokes kind of go more in an angle, which we didn't really do too much. I kind of wanted to do that a little bit. Hmm. Okay, let's see what we can do. Let's put in some white. I'm 
try to get something going here. So I just want to re, I'm going to do my sky a little bit because I do want to get the strokes a little bit on this angle. Put in a little bit of white and put in some more yellow on top of my white. I'm going to get a little, little bit of blue and some white just to mix in here. Everything's like dry now, so I'm trying to mix it and trying to get this kind of strokey thing happening on dry paint. Okay, let's go into the blue, white and blue. I'm just going on top because I wanted to make it more, like I said, like I want the sky to be a bit more on this angle. And I'm not, I uh, didn't really get that initially. Let's see if this works. I need to get some more yellow going here. Without the music, it just feels so quiet. I wish I could hear you guys. I wish you guys could talk to me and I could hear you. I wouldn't feel so lonely. Oh, painting. Do not go away. Yeah, so I just kind of put some angled lines there. Just I want to make it a bit more... I don't know, like the sky's in movement instead of it just being like... Horizontal and boring, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. So I'm doing this by blending with the same colors that I had in the background. I'm using quite a bit of white into the colors to blend it in. And I'm painting over my background that I just created, essentially. The more layers you put on with acrylic, I, I, the more texture and the more lifelike it becomes. I'm a very big proponent of doing that. So if you have the time, I would strongly suggest you can go over it again and do the same type of thing with the colors and just blend gently, like kind of what I'm doing here with my brush and add some more depth to it. And you basically just, like I said, you do the same thing. So you basically put the yellow on top where the yellow is, you put a little bit of blue, make it green, then get into a light blue, and you kind of just filled it the same way we did the first time. And by doing that, it will just have more depth. And now it will help me with my angle, because I want my sky to have a little bit of movement. And if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. I need to get some darker colors going here. Stop with all the white. This is also me because like I said, I could see a lot of my canvas behind and it was bothering me. So by putting on this kind of second layer, that's giving me this like sky feeling or this wind feeling, I guess, is more what I'm saying. Helps. So I don't like to see my canvas behind here. Okay, I'm gonna need to get some purple going. Grab that red.
to get more blue paint. I'm using lots of blue paint today. Wow, Zoe. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. Okay guys, I'm really excited about that. Honestly, as I was doing, when I started, I was like, oh, it's not gonna look good. <laughs> I'm gonna make a fool out of myself in front of everyone. But no, I'm super happy with it. Okay, good. Whew. I can breathe better again. If you're not sure how it looks too, I, I strongly suggest like move away from the painting and kind of look at it from a bit of a distance. Cause sometimes when we get so close to it, it's hard to see what's happening and whether it's working out well or not. Like just now I just added a dirty, dirty yellow onto here and that's not what I want to do. I was overly confident. <laughs> it's like it's going so well. I don't need to clean my paintbrush. Oh wait, yes I do. Cool. Oh, pretty sky. So happy. I need more yellow too on here. Used up all my colors. And I'm still using like my brush that like has really good coverage, like it's my big brush, but you can use whatever works for you. So if you find that the big brush is working for you, cool. If you're finding that you need something that's a little bit more detailed, you can always move on to like your medium sized brush too. It's really whatever works for you. Hmm. Spaceship in the sky. Let's get rid of this dark blue happening here. Okay, cool. I need still a little bit more yellow just to blend that out a little bit. Okay, cool. Yes. Sweetie sky. Oops, sorry, I miss I'm missing all your your comments, guys. I'm so sorry. So Joe's saying, I may not have to buy my paint at the dollar store and get better quality. You can, but like I, like I said, I use dollar store paint and it's kind of crappy, but <laughs> at the same time, I can still do this. So it, it, it kind of works out. Um, I have, I have, like, I'm not someone, I've never really used really expensive paint, so I'm not someone to really speak on it. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. They might end up being freaking awesome. I definitely put, I have paint splatter on my Oh my gosh, my long handles. Driving me mad. I'm trying to clean up a little splatter that happened there and now it's like, what the heck, man? Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Figure it out afterwards. Yeah, my tape is dollar store paint, Joe. It's my paint is like it's called Deco Art Crafters Acrylic and I got it from Dollarama. Like that's that's what I use. Cheap. I think it's like a dollar a bottle, a dollar store. Um and that's the only ones I have. I don't have any other paints. Those are the ones I, 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 so I, don't, I don't have it mixed and matched brands. I know I've heard different things, like different brands are different. Like, so like it might be, of course, different brands are different. That's the stupidest thing to say. But um, I've heard that before, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it would be awesome to go to Vancouver Island. That'd be amazing. Oh, uh, thank you, Orenda. That's really sweet. And you can hear it. Oh, good. I'm glad you can hear me better now. That's good. That's important. Okay, cool. Now, what else do I need to do here? So we have my sky. I'm digging it. Still a little bit wet before I do some of these cloud formations, which I'm also, let me just tell you, a little scared about right off the hop, but we're going to do them and it's going to be awesome. So we're not going to worry about it. Um, I do want to play a little bit more with the water because again, and even here too, the red's a little bit like not not as opaque as I want it to be. So I'm going to do a little bit of touch up. And the reason why I'm spending so much time on this is because once we start putting in everything on top of it, it's not going to be easy to fix or to touch up things in the background once you cover it up with a bunch of trees. So I really want to make sure I'm super happy with my background before I move on. So what I'm doing now is just because I, I don't feel like it's 
opaque enough, I'm just going to put another layer of red. And I'm going to build it up again with my yellow to mix it into my orange. And we'll see how far. I don't know if I need to go super far. I just want to, I want that red to be a bit more opaque. I'm also looking at my lines too, and I don't want it to be like super, like block of red, block of orange. So I'm going to kind of like throw in a little bit more. Oh, that's not what I want to do. But I want to like mess it up a little bit. Like I don't want it to be super straight line. So I'm just going to put a little bit more orange a little bit further down just to make it look a little bit. I don't know, more natural. I feel like with it being super straight lines, it looks a little bit weird. So I think that looks already a little bit better because it has just like, it kind of stops and starts. And Honestly, this is the sky I could just keep playing with for a long time. I'll try not to just to be conscious of everyone's time, but oh man, I could just touch and play with this like, <laughs> constantly okay so let's just get this here to the water and I did want to make it a little bit purple so I'm going to get a little bit of blue and throw it in here super dark I'm cleaning off my brush after I do every stroke pretty much because I want to try to clean that a bit and take up some of the excess paint but I still want it to be purple that's nicer. That's what I want. Nice. Okay, cool. There's so much yellow. Oh, I'm glad you're liking it, Veronica. Good. Apple barrel paint. That's also a cheap brand too, right? Yeah, it's cheap and it gets the job done, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I know Apple Barrel. I've seen that before. I'm like, okay, you run in my circles, Carrie. We're in the same circles, cheap paint circles. I like it. Just want to mix this a little bit more. into the yellow but I'm trying not to lose my yellow so I'm just trying to touch it a bit I want to mess it up a little bit I don't want it to be super like super crazy straight lines I don't want that no oh then I did that and I don't want to do that okay that's okay that actually worked out kind of nicely I'm just putting in some, I'm kind of just going over again, like what we did, kind of what we did at the top, but I'm just doing the same thing at the bottom here. And I'm trying to make my strokes a little bit, again, shorter. So in the water, you have like, I don't know, more ripples. I guess it can be like a really calm, I guess it depends what water you're doing. But I like, when I do water, I like to have it show like water ripples and to have more texture to it. So I do like to have a bit of shorter strokes at times show movement maybe there's some fish I don't know it's a very like magical scene like I don't think we've ever seen like a full-on like rainbow <laughs> like <laughs> like this like the sky is very unrealistic but beautiful oh the full moon yesterday I don't know if anyone saw it but it was so so pretty on another note I saw this one someone took a beautiful picture of the full moon and uh it doesn't it doesn't look real like i don't know how cameras are crazy i don't know how they they ended up doing it but it just it was so stunning it was captivating so huge and 
beautiful. It looks gorgeous. Kind of lost my train of thought. I guess I was just saying how like this looks very unrealistic, but then I also saw a picture of the moon and it looked very unrealistic. So I guess, <laughs> I guess anything is possible. But uh, I feel like I'd be a little scared if I saw a full-on rainbow in the sky. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, it's beautiful, but what is going on? Okay, so I'm going to get this a bit darker with purple, too. I'm just putting in a bit more like spottier lines to try to on top of my purple, my ready purple, put a bit of blue just to feel more watery. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, cool. Whoopsie. Alright, so now now this is nice and this has been dry, so we're good. So I think let's start playing with that. So sorry, it's we've take, I've taken a long time to do the sky and the water. So at this point, we can either go back and put plop the clouds in and figure and play with that, or we can do the horizon line. I think we're going to go in with the horizon line and start putting some of these trees in. So these trees are kind of like a really dark purple. So I would suggest playing with that. So I'm just going to fully try to clean off my big brush because I don't want things to stay on it, like paint to stay on it. I don't want it to get there. And what I want to do is, I think I'm going to get my medium brush. I'm going to start with my medium brush, but I think I'm going to go with my fine brush afterwards. Okay, so I want to get like a purple going. So I think this is the time I'm going to mix it a little bit on my canvas. My canvas, no, my palette is what I meant to say, the opposite. And get some blue, throw it in my red just to get like a purple going, a nice dark purple. Okay, so when we put the trees in, you can decide where you want your horizon line to live. If you notice, the trees don't end in a perfect straight line. There's like a lot of jaggedness there because I guess the branches and stuff are still sticking out. So we don't need to be perfect on that at all. Um, and we might want to maybe touch it up even after we do some of the snow potentially too. Now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, but that's cool. Let's just start with the, the tree line. Okay, so how do we do our tree? So we have a horizon line. It's going to be just a little bit above where my red is, I think. So let's, you know what? I'm just going to put in like a very thin line just to give myself a, a guide of where I want those trees to live. So I'm just going to put it. It doesn't have to be straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't matter because you're going to be putting in those trees anyway. So it's all good. Okay. And then now we're going to decide where we want some of these. Yeah, this is this brush is too thick. I don't like it. Sorry, I'm switching my brush. My medium brush is too fat. Sorry, we need my thinner brush. Okay, let's use thinner brush. Okay. So I'm going to come down, put a line where I want my tree, and then we want to just come out. Okay. So you can decide where you want your trees to live. And you just kind of just, you want to give the idea of trees. It, they, they're not perfect. They're not all uniform. So some are going to be a bit taller than others. Okay, it's just the idea of some trees in the background. Right, so again, I'm just, I might just like throw my brush a little bit. I do want it to be a nice thick horizon line. Like I don't want it just to be like, because if you notice, there's a lot of like brush in there, right? So there's a lot of things happening. It's so just using like the tip of your brush. You can kind of just create tips of some trees that are just living in the background, right? Okay. 
right, and then some of them you can form out a little bit more. And I would suggest continuing it across the line, even though you're going to have other trees that are going to cover. But that will help because just in case your trees look a little bit different or you see behind it, you'll kind of see the background will still kind of continue. So it just looks more like finished. of trees. Oop, some red paint on that. That's not good. Cool. Let's continue here. Okay. Cool. Cool. Just want to make some of them stick out a little bit. I also noticed that even though I'm trying to be kind of random with my lines and not trying to be super specific, just the pattern of my brush tends to make the same like stamp almost across the board and I don't like it to look super uniform like that. So I'm just going back and just trying to randomize it a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to, I want to make this line more, I still want it to give the lines of trees happening. It's dark enough. But okay, there we go. So I got my tree line going on. These, the trees that I've done here, Mary, they're a really uh, dark purple, but they can be black if you want them to be. That's totally fine too. But these ones, I just mixed uh, my red and my blue together and did a really dark purple. But it might, it looks like that on my painting boats. Again, the lighting is pretty poopy. Oh, awesome, Tina. I'm really happy about that. That's great. And Carol, yeah, so the line is like a really dark purple. Again, sorry, I'm trying to keep watch your guys' comments. Okay. Okay. All right, so I want to start blocking in where I want the snow to live and my land. So I'm going to start doing that. And this one I am going to use my medium brush to do. So that will work for me this time, I think. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to use white to block it in. And then we're going to play around with shadows and whatever else as, as needed. But we're just going to block it in first with the white, okay? So there's snow. Again, this is behind my, my trees that live in the front. But I'm going to get white going here on my horizon. If you notice again in our inspiration image, some of the trees, like I said, the purple kind of goes on top of the trees, maybe like as like a shadow or, or whatnot. So we will put that in afterwards. I'm just going to put in the white here. Okay. Okay. And so now we want to decide where do we want this to live. 
So I already kind of went a little bit too much with my white, I gotta say. I don't like that too much, but that's okay. We'll fix it in a bit. Okay, so how do I want this to live? So I want it to come, I want it to jut out here. Okay, so let's make that part jut out into the And this should be when your water has already dried. So if you're doing it on top of wet paint, you're going to pull in a lot of color from here. We don't really want to do that. Okay. I'm just going to jut out here a little bit and come back. So that's that one piece of land here. Okay. Still pulling some of my red paint. I don't think it was super dry yet. That's okay. We can just go over another coat with white afterwards. Not a big deal. And I definitely made that too thick white. I don't like that at all. So we're going to fix that. And I'll show you how I fix it afterwards. I'm going to still put in my land. And then I'll show you how I'll thin down that too much snow in that area. It's not what I like. Okay. And then we have it on this side. So it starts off thinner down here. Okay, and it comes out a little bit. Let's just bring it all the way out. I can see that my red is pulling because it's still not super dry, but that's okay. Again, acrylic, we can paint over it, so it's not a big deal. And sometimes some of the color is going to come through in the snow anyway, so it might actually work for us. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. We're just going to go with it for now. Okay, and then I want this to come down. And we're going to have this come out. Okay, I'm going to bring that back. dry. My snow is kind of pink. Okay, and then I'm going to come out again, but I think I'm going to use my thinner brush to do that, but I'm going to just get this bottom part going first and then I'll touch it up with my thinner brush. just gives you more coverage of the snow right off the hub. Okay. okay. I'll go back to that in a moment. Hi Sabrina. Oh, I wish you could paint with us today too. But uh, yeah you can definitely do it on the weekend for sure. The videos are up so you can watch it whenever you so desire have time they are there for you guys okay, so let's go with my thinner brush to get a couple of these little jets out a little bit better and fill that in. Okay, 
so I'm just going to go over some of the areas that you can that need it really what I'm trying to say I'm going to go ahead too and then I'll fix that up afterwards this is still wet but I'm still going to try to cover up some of that red as I go Okay. And even here too, I can see that my um, water, like the darkness, is still coming through my white. So I'm going to need another coat on top of that. But we won't do that right yet. Okay. I'm going to get my thin brush again. And I'm just going to tighten this up because that is not what I like. I'm in an error for sure with my medium brush there. So I'm just going to get my thin brush. And I'm going to bring this further and clean it up a little bit. So I'm just using red paint on top of my white mistake here. It's going to kind of disappear behind here. Okay. I'm going to get the the wet paint to kind of clean it up a little bit. I don't want this to be thinner. Let's do that. I know it's kind of pink right now, but then we'll fix it up in a little bit. jet there too. We'll see if I want to keep that or not. Okay. Well, for now, I think that's a little better. Still a little thick up here. I don't like that. I'm just going to make it a little thinner. I like. Basically deleting it <laughs> with my brush. And I'm going to use white just to repaint in the snow. That's what I got. All right, so I'm going to let this dry out a little bit before we go in and put in some trees and do some more with it. Um, I want to go and do some clouds, I think, while this sits for a moment because I do have quite a bit of paint on there. Um, yeah, let's play with the clouds. Okay, so the clouds are really nice pink, so we're going to use the red and the white. And I'm also going to use some of the purple that I made too, just to blend it out a bit. I'm going to use my medium brush to play with these. And I'm going to do it pretty, I think, dry at first, just to see how I want to play with them. So I'm going to make some pink on my palette first. So I'm just putting a little bit of red into my white just to get a, a pink going very very light pink okay 
All right, hoorah! Let's see how this is gonna work. Okay, so let's just. It's very bright. Okay, this is too much paint on my brush, but I'm just going to get this going here. And then I want to get that purple, darker purple. And then we're going to mix it in the outside here just to. And I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to blot it. Keep the color going, but I want it to be mixed You're like a puffy cloud. That looks a little different, but it still has a nice little cloud image going on there. I'm happy with that. Clouds freak me to write out. I don't lie to you guys. <laughs> I'll let you know how I'm feeling. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, these clouds freak me right out. But, uh, they're gonna look good. That's what's gonna happen right now. They're gonna look amazing. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm basically using um, paint, so I'm getting the color I want, so I'm using that light kind of pinky color, and then I'm putting that on, and when I put that on, I'm like, oh my god, that's a lot of paint. Then I clean it, quote, clean it with my paper towel. Then I get the background kind of color, which is like that dark purple, and then I pop paint along in that area and also at the same time feeling like oh god I'm ruining my painting and then I clean it again with my paper towel and then I blend them with my clean brush into each other just to kind of soften them out and to make them look puffy and like clouds I'm going to add a little bit of like ready in here and do the same thing. Put the color in, kind of clean my brush and then I blur it in. Hmm. Okay, I want to do like more of a, can't even see that cloud there, can you? Need some more color in here just to make it live. I think that one's a little bit too pinky. I'm going to put some more red in here. And then I just put some purple to blend it into the purpley background, like more blue, I should say, sorry. Make it more. A little bit of paint, clean off my brush, whatever other color you want to use. So I want this one to be a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to blend them, push them into the background. It's pretty dark. You can't really see that one too much. So yeah, that works. I'll blend it a bit. 
feel like my clouds are a little too bright. Put some red back in them. There we go. Okay, let's do this one here. Do some more lighter ones here. So don't think about clouds, just play with the color. So now we want to get some light color happening here. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of white down this area. I'm going to get a little bit of that purple color up in here. Maybe a little bit in here. I need more of that purpley color. Just dabby dabby dabby. And then clean off my brush and then we're going to smush it. Before it starts, before it dries fully. And that's the trick. Sorry for the sound, it's like hitting against as I'm smushing. I need to make it a little bit wetter. I'm just going to get some of that dark purpley color so I can blend it more in here. Yeah, that didn't turn out that well over there. I don't like that. Just try to blend it out a little bit more. That's fine. I might touch that up again. That's fine. Okay. So if you guys can see them too well, they look actually it looks better like that. But there you go. So you can kind of see the clouds. So it's like kind of smushes. So you just kind of put the color that you want. Like put the white or put the pink, put like little smushes of it, clean off the brush, like clean it on your paper towel, and then you kind of like then smush it around and blend it. And then every time you get too much paint on your brush, you clean off the brush again and then you smush it again more. And you kind of just play with it and try not to make them look mine. Mine look all <laughs> they look kind of weird and be similar. I don't like that. I have to try to I'm gonna just do that again. So I'm just gonna get like a lighter try to make this cloud doesn't look the same as the other one over there. See, too much paint on that. No, no, it just looks weird. Nope, too light, too light. At least we'll change the shape of this cloud so it won't look so similar to the other ones. That's okay, I guess. Okay, that's better. At least they don't look too similar. Because sometimes, again, my clouds, uh, they look weird. Try not to make them look all the same. Okay. <laughs> right here. Get this one out a little bit. I'm okay with these. I do want to maybe a little bit more up here. 
Let's do that a little bit. Just with the red and the blue. Also to cover up my canvas corner because again that was a little kind of see it. So I'm just kind of doing this just to give it a texture of a cloud and, and take away some of the I can tell I can see my paint brush strokes when I did the background so I'm just putting in a little bit of stip stapling I guess stippling stippling effect with like the red and the blue to kind of make it feel like cloudier corner here. Yeah that's better. So it was not big in the streaky paint strokes I could see before. Alright. All right. That's staying the way that is because I don't want to touch it anymore because I feel like I'm going to ruin it. Cool. Okay. And let's pop that moon in. Ooh, did I use all of my paper towel today? Oh my. I sure did. Grab some more. I usually have like six or seven pieces of paper towel folded and ready to go and I definitely went through them all today. Paper towel day. Okay. So let's get that. I want to just plop in that moon back here. So I'm just going to find a spot and I'm just going to do like a little crescent. Like that. We'll just leave it as such. Okay. All right, let's go back down towards our trees and our land and get back going. How are you guys all doing? Oh, thank you, Patty. I'm glad you love it. Yeah, I'm digging this guy. The, the clouds turn out. I'm, oh, I'm so scared to do clouds every single time. And every and they turn out, I'm always like, oh, thank God. <laughs> like, oh, thank goodness. Because I always think they're absolutely not going to turn out. Okay, so I'm just going to cover up some of the... I can see the water through my land, which doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to touch it up a little bit before I plot in my other elements here. This one's definitely taking a bit longer than I had anticipated, but I definitely took a lot of time with the sky and the water and the blending. I think it was worth it. Hopefully you guys did too. But it was definitely longer than I anticipated, which are coming up on our two hour mark very quickly. Try to keep it around two hours, but this might go to the three, I think, at this point. So brace yourselves. Refresh your own personal water supply because <laughs> it might happen. Okay, so I think before I do the trees in the front, I want to just put in like that kind of jaggedy, like shadow, I guess, line from the trees in the background onto my snow. I want to just put that in before I move on to the foreground. So I'm just going to again mix like a a dark purple with my red and my blue. If you did black for the trees, and you can just use black, that's totally fine. And I'm just going to... I put like little strokes into the snow, just bring, just don't make it a straight line anymore. So just kind of, oops, I need more of that dark purple. Okay, there we go. So it's not a straight line. So I'm just going to go across it and just change it up a little bit. And again, I'm going to do it all across, even where it's going to be covered, but I just want it to not be like a, a straight line. So I'm just going to put like little dabbies. Some might be a bit longer than others. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to make it a more natural horizon line instead of a straight line. It seems a little bit weird. Not my And maybe if the tree's a little taller, then I'm just going to make it come down a little bit more. Make it almost like a shadow, I suppose. A shadow on the snow, on the tips of the trees. There we 
again, this is probably gonna be covered with those trees, but whatever. This is what we're doing. Take a little bit of the line there. Okay, cool. There we go. So now it just looks a little more jagged, not so weirdly linear with the lines in there, which didn't work for me. Cool. All right, we're gonna put in some trees. So what we have left to do, let's just talk that through so everyone is aware in case you need to stop or or whatnot. So we're gonna still put in our trees. So the way we're gonna do our trees is I'm gonna use black to put in the trees and the branches. And then once that's decided where we want them, then we're gonna put some snow on the branches. That's how we're gonna approach our trees. They're gonna be black with snow on them, essentially. Once we have our trees in, um, then there's some nice little growths coming out of the snow, so that's something else we're gonna have to put in. But before we do that, we're gonna put in a little bit of shadow in the snow where our trees are creating a bit of a shadow um, to kind of mess up the snow a little bit so it doesn't look like pure white because that's not really natural. Um, and then we're gonna put in some details as well on our water. So as you can see, the land creates a bit of a shadow, right, in certain parts there. So it's like a little bit darker like here and here and here. So we're gonna put in a bit of a shadow just to show where that land we're gonna put in a bit of a reflection on some of the trees that we create. And we might even put in a little bit of some highlights too, because as you can see, it's almost like the clouds are being reflected, like there's some kind of pinkish purplish here going on. So you might wanna put that in as well. So those are the, the things that we need to um, still add to this painting before it's fully completed. Unless you're doing your own route, you can do whatever, again, you want to. It doesn't have to be the same. It can be totally your own your own creation. Okay, so how are we gonna put this tree in place? So number one, I need my trusty black paint. Put some black on my palette. Use my my thinner, my thin brush. It could be your medium one too. It really just depends on which brush has you have the most control with. And I do want it to be like a thin point at the top. That's important to me. And so the way I'm gonna do this tree, I'm putting a little bit of water in my black paint just so that the paint is like ink-like so it's easy and it's smooth for me to paint with it. Okay, on a thin brush, it's always a little annoying too because the paint run doesn't hold as much paint so you're not gonna be able to go as long with it. Okay, so let's decide where that tallest tree is gonna be and just go with it. So we're just gonna put a line kind of where the tip of the tree is all the way down to wherever that tree's gonna live, essentially. So that's where one of my trees gonna live, probably that main one there, right? Cool. So once you have that going, then we're gonna start. So when you look at the branches, they're smaller at the top and they're bigger at the bottom. There's spaces between it, right? And you have to thicken up where the trunk lives because there's some branches that come that are going straight, right? So there's some branches that are coming right above the trunk that we can't really see from this angle, I suppose, but it's still thickening up your, your tree. So we're going to come down. We're gonna come down. So right now we can kind of just build where like they live, if you want. Um, another, another one like here, maybe another one here. Another one here. Okay. Another one here, here, here. And I'm going to go back up here and I'm just going to thicken up my trunk a little bit and I'm going to thicken up my where these branches live. Ooh, it needs to come out a little bit. Maybe I'm going to add another one there, actually. Yeah. And sometimes you may decide another one grew or you kind of missed drawing it initially, right? Maybe one of the ones up here-ish. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. So always start thinner and then you thicken up as you go. Okay, and you want to leave spaces because you want to see your beautiful sky in the background. Okay. 
right? You want to be able to see it, and it also lets it breathe a little bit, too. It makes it pop the tree, so when you have the branches you can see behind it, it comes out more. That makes sense. And we always start thinner and then we thicken up because it's easier. You, you can, you, it's harder to like, if you make it too fat, it's going to be harder for you to fix it later because then how are you going to do the background again, right? Like you're going to have to try to mix the paint when you have this tree on top. It's not fun. Okay, so as we go down, we want the branches to be bigger and the trees bigger. So it's going to come out more. Okay, this trunk has to be a little thicker. So let's make him a little thicker as we come down. But again, we're not even seeing the trunk realistically. We're just seeing a bunch of beautiful, thick, luscious branches. Trying to keep my strokes even, but sometimes they betray me. I feel like it needs to be a bit And down here, you really can't see the snow behind the trees at all. So let's build in these branches. Just get the idea of where they're living. But we're pretty much covering up the background. Oh, too much paint. There we go. So that's my one big tree that lives there. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing for the other trees, essentially. So now we're going to put another tree about here, smaller tree about there. And then once we have all the black kind of decided out where we want these trees to live, then we're going to go in and we're going to put in some snow on the branches and whatnot. We're going to do that once it dries, or once it's, I should say, drier. Okay. So this tree as well is going to live about here. And it comes down a little bit further than the other tree. Okay, it's a bit more sparse in the top here. Some of the branches actually look like oh, it goes up there. I'm going to keep them all kind of coming down though. And this tree can obviously, I think, obviously, but I'm going to say it can go on top of the other tree. So it's going to just look like a lot of black blob until we get some snow on these branches. And it's going to continue off of my canvas too. So I'm going to try to make it feel like it's continuing off the canvas there. Okay, so this is going to kind of go into the, like here, nice big Pretty much all black down here. So I still want to keep in mind like the flow of some of these branches, but re really though, like this whole area is going to be black. 
and I'm going to get the side of my canvas too. Okay. Okay, so there's that guy. So pretty, so beautiful. Okay, we're gonna do another tree behind here. So again, this one's gonna go up there-ish. And it ends about here. Okay. And then we'll have, this one's further in the back, so you can't see it as well. And this one's behind this other tree. So when we put the snow in, we're just going to keep that in mind. So we make sure that the snow on this tree is, like the snow on that tree can't be on top of the one that's in the foreground. So you just got to keep that in mind when we paint those out afterwards. And again, it's pretty... Majestic. Pretty. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, you absolutely can. You can replay this. I think you can replay it right now if you want to go right back to the beginning and rewatch it like in the moment. Or you can watch it on um, my YouTube channel, Lisa's Painting Parties. It'll be up there once this live is complete, probably in about like three or four hours or so. Not when this live is complete like that, but like it'll be up on YouTube in about three or four hours. Um, and um, or under the videos tab on the YouTube channel. Okay, let's put this tree in here too. So it's gonna it's a little bit further back. Okay. And That's a weird. So I can't believe tomorrow is New Year's Eve already. Isn't that crazy? This year feels like. Sometimes it feels like it, it took forever to go by, and then other times it just feels like it went by so quickly. So again, for next week's paint party, um, on Saturday we'll have three more options for you guys all to take a look and to vote on. Then we'll paint again next Wednesday. And all the options are like celebratory, New Year's kind of themed. So this should be quite fun. And it'll come out, like I said, on Saturday around noon. Those three options will be available. This is all pretty much black here. And then we have another tree right beside it. Here ish. More or less. I'm just going to bring it on down.
And there's that beautiful tree. How pretty. So it's kind of scary. <laughs> There's just like a weird shadow of trees. They look a little creepy. But yeah, we'll, we'll put some snow on them. They'll look, they'll look more realistic, more alive. Okay, so we'll let that sit momentarily. So let's put in some of the elements that we want to do. Ooh. Okay, one second. Okay. Some of the elements that we want to do to the water here. So um, first of all, we want to put in we want to make this not as, oh my gosh, this brush is kind of crappy. What is going on? Okay, there we go. All right. Um, so we want to put in a little bit of shadow on these trees. Um, and we want to do that with, I don't know if I want to do it with some of the purple. I don't know if I want to go all black to get like a gray shadow. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to go with my medium brush. I need to get more white on my palette. So first up, I'm just going to go over some of the areas with white paint just so I can, I want it to be wet when I mix another color into here. So right now I'm just going to go with white. Okay, let me just go over some more of this with the white paint. So we'll cover up again some more of my background a bit. Cool. Um, hmm. I'm going to do a little bit of that purple, like a dark purple. So red and blue, I'm mixing a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to use that. It looks a little bit more bluish though. So maybe I want to go more blue. Okay, so we want to put a little bit. So I'm just going to put in the color here. Dirty up the snow a bit. But I'm going to lighten it up. So it does look a little bit starking right now. But don't worry. Clean off my brush. Grab the white. And now we're going to go into this. There we go. Kind of a little bit of a blend with that dark I guess you could use blue to it. It kind of looks more bluish, but I'm kind of digging the purple. Add a little bit of shadow here. Oh, some of the black got in there. You know what? But I'm I'm not mad about that. We can work with that. Just put a little bit more white into it. Dirty up the snow. I have to touch up that tree afterwards. That's okay. Oh my. Too much black. Too much black. I'm pulling too much of the wet paint in here. Yeah. Dirty up that snow a bit. Yeah, that works out nicely. I like it. Okay. Blend it a little bit. Still wet on wet. Yeah, that looks a little bit more natural. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on this side. So let's put white paint. <laughs> Already I grabbed the black paint from the wet trees. That's okay. gonna use that purplish bluish color that we're just gonna put in a little bit under the tree here and a little bit under this one too a little bit on this side a little bit here like that 
Okay, cool. And then we're going to get my white. I'm just going to blend it in. I don't want this dark color to take over, but I do want it to be nicely blended into the white. So again, I'm using the paper towel a lot to clean off my brush when it gets too much paint on it. Dirtying it up a little bit. Okay, so let's just put a little bit here. I need more white too. Again, sorry for the comments. Let me see what you guys are saying. So sorry. Hi, Diane. Oh, I'm glad you're going to be taking out your paints tomorrow. That's fantastic. This is a really fun one to do, so I, I, I strongly suggest it. I'm so glad you're enjoying this, Tanya. And Linda, yeah, absolutely. Definitely, definitely tomorrow. I want to see yours, too. You, too. Have a great 2021. Absolutely. I cannot believe it's tomorrow. <laughs> My husband, too, were talking today, and I was like, okay, yeah, like, New Year's Eve. And he was like, oh, yeah, New Year's Eve. And I'm like, no, it's tomorrow. And he was like, oh, what? Like, it was one of those moments. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, New Year's Eve, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, 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 like... <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's tomorrow already. I'm like, yep, neither can I. And here in Ontario, we're all like in um, like a, a full on lockdown. So, yeah, it's like we're not allowed to associate at all. Unless we're people in our households. No bubbles, no nothing. But apparently one of our like politicians was found that he apparently went to like the Caribbean or something. I'm like, oh, yeah. Everyone has to be in lockdown, and you guys get to go traveling places. What the heck, man? But anyways, not that I would want to travel anyways. <laughs> but find the hypocrisy is a little ridiculous. All right, cool. All right, so I'm glad with the way the snow looks now, so I'm very happy with that. And so, but I still want to put in some more details around the water. So I'm going to get my thinner brush again. And I think I'm going to stick with like that really dark purple. So I'm going to get some uh, blue again, some my uh, red, get a really dark purple going. I'm digging that. Okay. And then I'm going to line my land with a bit of this purple just to give it a little bit of a shadow. Okay. And then I want to do it here too. Oh my gosh, this brush is killing me. It's not giving me smooth lines at all. Part of it, my red paint is already like very dry, so I have to put a little more water in it, but oh, I hate when my lines aren't smooth. It drives me insane. Okay. A little bit more there. Okay, so where I'm going with the shadow is basically... Let's 
like where the land where you could actually kind of see where the land hits the water here so I'm kind of just putting a just outlining it a little bit it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight land, line because it is land so it can be a little bit crookedy it's fine it can be a little thick or thinner in some points that's fine I just don't like my paint line to look frayed like I don't want it to have like you know what I mean when I use the paintbrush and sometimes it looks a little bit like wonky I'm okay if it's thicker or thinner I just don't want it to be like wonky I'm just gonna put a little bit here make that come out a bit to almost look like that tree that's there do that okay and then I'm gonna do another bit here Fix up that tree, but I wanted to have a bit more of a shadow in here. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, and then we're gonna do here. And then we're gonna do here. And then we're gonna even do here, but you're not gonna be able to see it at all. Because <laughs> everything is really dark in this area, but I'm still gonna do it. I might need to use some black actually. Let's do black. Let's see if the black makes it pop better. Yeah, it does. Ah! Aha! I like the little dry and it kind of looks poopy. Okay, there you go. And that looks a little bit weird. It's a bit thick. Okay, let's fix that. And fix it with just putting the white back over it. Okay, cool. So a little bit of shadow going on, which is cool. We also need to add some of our shadow from our trees, right? That's important. So let's do that too. So again, I want to stick with that kind of purpley color. I like, I'm digging that. And I might still might make it a little bit darker. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm just going to go in and in the water, I'm just going to put like little, oof. Again, I want to make my lines kind of smooth. They're totally not smooth, that's okay. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm just going to put like a few little lines in the water smaller as it gets to where the tip of the tree would be more thicker and bigger where the trunk of the tree is doesn't have to be anything too crazy and the same on this side too i'm going to do it here too I'm gonna make that. this one's going to be a little smaller because that tree is a little smaller Cool. I'm almost out of paper towels again. <laughs> My paper towel did it. Okay. Um, yeah, I think. You know what? I, I kind of want to give it more of a shadow on the snow. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it needs it, though. I feel like we need to put a bit of a shadow on here. I don't know. I think that's better. I don't know. I want to make it gray, though. Too much water. Yeah, that didn't really work the way I wanted it to. All right, let's just put white on it and fix it up. I'll fix it. I'll play with that. I don't know if I like that. That's fine. Okay, so we have the shadow in the water, which is what we wanted, which is great. Okay, 
So now the few things that are left to do is we can either put some more of that reflection of the clouds kind of in the water here to give it that kind of pinky look here. Um, we also have to put the snow on the trees and we have to put the little shoots that are coming out of the snow. So those are the last few things that we need to add before the painting is complete for today. Oh good, Julie says she's finished the last tree. Awesome. Tammy says it's looking awesome. Thank you, Tammy. And Donna found me on YouTube. Awesome. That's great. It's YouTube is literally the same videos and I just pop them on there. It just I don't know. I think I think it's probably a better format to like watch them and then it will go to the next one if you want to. And yeah, I think it's just easier to navigate through it, you know? So I kind of like it on YouTube. Okay. Um, so now we're going to put in some of our snow on our trees. Okay. So where you want to hit the snow. So now you just want to be mindful that the snow is going to be on top of the branches. So wherever you put the snow, the black that remains is like the shadow or, or below it. Okay. So we're going to put a little bit of white on our paintbrush. Okay. And the snow can really land wherever you want it to land. It doesn't really matter. So like this branch has snow here. And it has some snow here, and it has some snow here, and it has some snow like that. And there's a branch that kind of comes out that way. And then there's some on this branch here, and there's some more here. And there's some here, and there's some here. So I would say, like, a rule of thumb, kind of follow, like, the branches that you've put in. But then... Remember that some branches don't, the tree doesn't just go like boom, boom, boom. There's some branches that come in the middle, right? So some of your snow might kind of come weirdly like down the, the middle because the branch might be facing the viewer, right? So think about how you, you want that. Think about where you want it, right? Um, Let's see, and then under here. There's some snow like okay, and when you do it, this really like builds your tree. It actually makes it seem a lot more realistic. Ooh, I don't like why they're there. Okay. <laughs> and I would just say, like, try to, like, when you do it, uh, be a little bit, like, messy with your snow. Because snow doesn't land in, like, a straight line. So you want to kind of, especially on a tree, because it has all, like, the, the texture of it. So when you do it, you kind of, like, move your hand, like, shakily, I guess, to make it seem a little bit more natural. That's how I, I approach it. Okay, so there you go. I got my first tree there. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same kind of thing on these branches here. And as I go, like sometimes I'm hitting the full branch, sometimes I'm not. And that's okay. Again, it shouldn't look super uniform because it's it's natural. Maybe you have a big clump of snow on something and then maybe there's very little somewhere else and that, and that works out okay.
there you go so I don't know if you guys can see that well so I'm just putting like little smushy lines of snow on it and then you can always add more dimension to that you can always go back in with a little bit of black and like kind of pepper it if you want so for example I have a little bit of black now so I can kind of like just go in and just like pepper it a little bit uh, and then it just won't look as like uniform because sometimes again like when we're painting I just want to like mess up the lines a little bit so I'm just going to go in and put like a little bit of, of black I might mix a little bit in my white and just kind of like make it seem a bit more natural if you like that if you don't just keep going if you're liking your the way the tree's looking then that works out too Oh, thank you so much, Tori. Tori says, my sky is nicer than the picture. That's really sweet. Thank you. I'm always, like I said, I'm always scared to do the clouds. <laughs> they always freak me right out. Um, Maria, Maria is asking, how are the purple clouds made? So, um, so I did, I went through that earlier in the video, but basically the way I did it, so it's, I'll just talk through it. Um, it's, it was on, so everything's dry. So what I did was I got my pinky color and I kind of just like blotted in a little bit of pink and then I got some purple and then I blotted in a little bit of like the darker purple and then I did a little bit of white and I cleaned off my brush pretty constantly to make sure my brush didn't have a lot of paint on it and then I like smushed it in and every time my brush had too much paint I would clean it off to smush it and so basically you do it on a dry background and then you are blending and smushing in the wet paint but very little amounts of it because if you use too much of it it's just going to end up being a big glob of whatever color takes over and we don't want that so but i do go through it and i show you as i'm doing it a bit earlier in the video i think you can either rewind it or you can watch it after when it's done you can check it out if you want more details on how to do it it's easier when you see it happening at the same time you know but hopefully that helped if you're doing that now. <laughs> so the trees kind of reminded me of like a little skeletal. <laughs> with the black and like my weird lines that I'm making at times. They're getting a little too uh, uniform. I've got to smush them up a little bit. Make them go in a couple different directions. Like the weird skeleton trees. dots instead of just lines. Okay, cool. To make it less uniform. Okay, let's keep putting some snow on these trees. Oh yeah, it's still wet. Okay. again with the snow on the trees you just kind of follow the lines that you had made initially and then in the black area you just kind of have to create your own branches by just putting a couple different random lines in different ways and they should really go into the snow too I suppose so <laughs> yeah the bottom here looks weird because I kind of messed up just gonna it as I go. Okay, let's do this one. So I'm kind of doing like the ones that branches that stick out. 
And then we can go in and do the middle parts, make them come out more like that. Yeah, nice. Snowy trees, amazing. I love it, it looks so fun. Okay, so now I wanna put in my random like sticks that are sticking out of the ground, cause why not? So we're gonna use our black paint and then I'm just gonna do a little like, boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna do another one like here. Try to make them thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom. That makes sense. Yeah, it can be weird looking, it doesn't really matter. And if they're further in the background, make sure they're smaller. If they're further away, so they should be thinner and they should be smaller. But there will still be a few. Back here, there, there's for some reason there's more in my background. <laughs> I'm enjoying doing them, I guess. Okay, cool. Okay, pretty. Okay, I think. I think I feel pretty done. I mean, I didn't put the reflection in the water. I don't know if I want to. I kind of do. Hmm. All right. Let's see. I do want to do a little bit more to my water, to be honest, because I feel like it's lacking a little bit. Where am I at with time? 218. Okay, that's not too bad. Two hours and 18 minutes. Not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Pete. That's really sweet. It says, what a fantastic painting. And I have real talent. That's really sweet. I'm good at, like, mimicking other people's work, <laughs> so I don't know, not the originality, but I can, uh, I can make it look really pretty, and, um, yes, Kitha, it does, uh, Kiatha, I think, how do you say your name? Sorry if I mispronounced it, it does, this will stay up ongoing, I don't have any plans to take it down, so you can watch it on my YouTube channel, or you can watch it on, um, this Facebook page, and it's good to go. Okay, um, what do I want to do? I want to add a little bit more lines to the water because I feel like water should have a little bit more movement than what it does currently. So I'm going to get a little bit of white. I'm going to put some water just to make it a little bit easier to move around. And I'm going to just put in a few thin little white lines in the water to make it kind of reflective-ish. Reflective-ish. Yep, that's a word. I don't even know if that's really what I'm doing with it exactly. Oh, I grabbed black in that process. That's not what I wanted to do. No black paint, just white. A few little... Oops, oops. There we go. Yeah, that's good. And a little bit down here. Okay. 
I think that makes it look more like water. Okay, and I think I want to do that with some of the other colors too. So I'm going to get a little bit of yellow and put a few little yellow ripples as well. Oh, yellow. Show up nicer. So I don't want it to go too far. Okay, and then I want to do like a blue. Maybe like a light blue. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's try that and see if I like that color. Yep, yeah, there we go. Nice. these lines in black too, but more in this darker area. Yeah, I like that better. I'm gonna do a little bit and like the orange. If I can. Yeah, I like this. Okay, cool. So this is totally just my own. I'm just kind of going rogue here and adding a little bit more. But I think I like that better. I like to see like ripples in water. So that's what I'm doing. Oh, thank you, Linda. <laughs> Linda says she likes mine better. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. And Angela, yeah, it's very fun, Angela. You're you're gonna love it. It's it's great. And like I said, I'm kind of surprised. It's only been two hours and twenty five minutes. I thought it was honestly, I thought it was gonna take longer, but um, I think I'm done. So there we go. So I, that's what I did with my water. I just added more lines in the water because I I like the way water looks like that more when I paint it. Um, so I put in like first like very thin white lines, and I just brought in the colors 
of each thing. So I kept, I put black lines in the darker area, but I didn't really bring that up too far because I wanted to stay more in the darker. And then I put in some more yellow and orangey lines. And again, I brought it a little bit into the darker zone, but I kept it more above. So I kept like the lighter lines here and the darker lines there essentially. And I did put in some like lighter blue just to give it a little bit of dimension. And I don't know, it feels more like water like that to me. So that's why I did that. And then that's pretty much, wow. Yeah, I think for today, I think that's all done. I'm just going to move this back up a little bit so you can see my beautiful face again. Ah. Okay, cool. There we go. You can still see that nicely. All right. So, yeah. So, that is the completed picture. Um, So pretty. I hope you all had a really great time painting along with me. And I can't wait to see your paintings. So, please take a picture of it and... Um, Put it, put it on the page as well. I'm going to snap a picture of this as well uh, and put it in a post on the page. So feel free in the comments. You can put your pictures there too when you're done with them. Um, I love to see them. I can't wait to see how you've changed it up made it your own. Again, this is one that definitely you could paint this and have lots of fun with this for a very long time. Um, again, the more layering you do, especially with the background, um, and even with the ripples in the water, you could add a lot more to that if you wanted to really give it a lot of texture if you want. Um, that can add a lot of dimension to the painting and take a long time. And even with the trees too, like honestly, the trees I did are pretty simplistic in terms of just having a black background and popping in the white for the snow. And I didn't do much more with it. But if you look in the original, like there's definitely more texture with the trees. So you could add a little bit more to that if you want to. Um, it just depends on your patience, I suppose, and, and how much you want to build in set or if you're digging it the way it looks. Um, so yeah, so I'm really happy with it. Thank you all for joining me. And like I said on uh, earlier, on Saturday we'll have uh, three more options that will come up. And this week, as it's the New Year, it's all celebratory kind of New Year's firework kind of idea themes. Um, so I hope you um, take a look and vote. And then we'll, we'll join back here again next Wednesday and we'll paint again. And again, these are always free. They're always available. The videos are on the YouTube, my YouTube channel, uh, Lisa's Painting Parties, and also under the videos tab on Facebook. Um, and I keep them up so you can do them whenever you so desire. Let people know whoever might be interested. If they want to follow along, feel free. Um, like I said, they're always free. Um, sometimes there's random links that pop up and whatever. Don't ever give your personal information or anything. Um, I do have like a Facebook shop, but very clearly you'll see this on my page. So if you're interested in anything, feel free to shop from there. It goes to the Redbubble site that I have all my products on. Um, but don't click on any random links or give out any personal information because don't do that. Um, and I think that's about it. So have a fantastic New Year's, everyone. Um, and I look forward to continuing to paint with you uh, every Wednesday. So hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Everyone, bye.